relatives, orphans, the needy, the near neighbor, the neighbor far away, the, the companion at your side, the traveler, and those whom your right hand possess. Indeed, Allah does not like those who are self-deluding and boastful. Surah to Nisa. Whatever people may be based in, aside from the goals stated above, such as living their day-to-day -day lives, abiding by the law, and abstaining from injustice, etc., are only secondary obligations and merely a means to achieving the first and primary objective in life. Ikhwatul Kiram, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Arba'at, As-salasatu man kunna fi, makad stak maladinu. No, Arba'at. He said there are four things if you find in any individual then he has perfected his religion. Number one, a siddiq wa shukur wa haya wa husn al khulq. Four things. Number one, truthfulness, gratefulness, shyness, and righteousness. So those four things, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, if you find in any individual that person has perfected his or her religion. And brothers, and sisters, this is exactly what Islam calls us to. There are many preachings, but all of them are anchored in this particular four things mentioned by Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Truthfulness. Even the liar, even the liar want to be told the truth. Even the liar. And so that's why Islam, Islam is all embracing religion. It says, be truthful. Be truthful. So, you don't have to be a Muslim to benefit from this particular teaching. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Rasulullah He said, Kul imni Rasulullah ilaykul jamia. I am a messenger to all of you, not just Muslims, to mankind, to jinn, to the Jews, to the Christians, to disbelievers, to the drunken guy, the homeless, the widows, the orphans, the hard pressed, the poor, and the needy. He, was, he came to all of us. And so his teachings are profound. It goes across the boundary. Not just for Muslims. He said, if you find these characteristics in someone, the person has perfected his or her life, has perfected his or her religion. Truthfulness. Now, what shukur? He said, this is part of human existence to be grateful and thankful to your fellow human beings and to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This brings amongst us love, it brings amongst us unity and respect. When people do something for you, say, oh, thank you, my sister, thank you, my brother. It's one of the characteristics of a Muslim. We talk about etiquette. You have to be grateful. If a Rasulullah said, anyone who does not thank his fellow human beings will not be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because you see your fellow human being and they are giving it to you. And then you don't say thank you. Allah, you don't see you thank be thankful to Allah. This is almost impossible. That can be. Well, haya. Shyness. And this is Rasul Sallallahu says, Al-Haya Khaylu Kullu. Al-Haya Khaylu Kullu. If you talk about uh, perfecting your religion, you have to have shyness. Particularly for our sisters. Even the brothers as well. Shyness is the religion. It's the only thing that, 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 that frightens away individuals from committing sin. If I do this, what will happen to me? If I do this, what will happen to me? Oh, if I go and bust somebody's door and they grab me there, buckler ride somebody home, they will, oh, police will arrest me, they will take me to jail. If my family gets to know my friends, it will bring shame to me. Then you will back off. Okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do not drink. Okay, if I drink and a Muslim smell liquor on me or they find me in the bar, subhanallah, you back off. Okay, no fornication, no adultery. What if I have a girlfriend and, or a boyfriend and they see me doing this as a Muslim? Everybody knows I go to the mosque. Ah, no, you back off. Shyness, al-haya, nisful iman. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Shyness represents half of your faith. So if you don't have this, he said, do whatever you want to do. If you don't have no shyness, do whatever, because that's the only thing that stops one from what they call. Wa husnul khulq, and good conduct. This whole topic is husnul khulq. And then in the hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Wa husnul khulq, and good conduct. Righteousness, good behavior. You know, good behavior, it does not just mean because you are a Muslim, so you only behave well when you are Muslim brothers and sisters. No, you are not conveying the message of Islam. Your good behavior should extend beyond your relatives, your religious groupings, 
and whatever, or tribal group. No, it should be for everybody. When you behave well in the community, you're actually sending a message of Islam. People will eat, be eager, they say, wow, these Muslims behave so well. I was wondering one day, one lady told me, a Christian lady, she goes to church. They said, brother, you Muslim? I said, Muslim. He said, at work, the Muslim sisters are different. He said, they behave so well. He said, I can tell you this. If I say, if, 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 before my sisters or my friend, maybe they might get angry. But the Muslim sisters at work, they behave differently. This is the characteristic that we need to have. But some of us, we say, people hate us. All the people don't like Muslims. I don't believe this. The people hate what we do wrong. As believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should not engage in anything that would bring disrespect to us. And so, when you see people condemning us, they don't condemn because you pray. They don't condemn you because you give zakat. They don't condemn you because you undertake humanitarian activity or social work. They don't condemn you because you fast Ramadan. They don't even condemn you because you go to Hajj or you believe in the oneness of Allah. But things that we do wrong, because why? A Muslim should not do those things. So when you do it, it's more alarming to them. They are equal. In the Bible, in the book of Leviticus, the Bible says, do not touch the carcass of it, it's, it is unclean for you. But yet, they eat, there's no shyness for them. But when you eat, it's oh, Muslim, you eat pork? The same laws. The same laws. And so, so we have to keep away from the Muharramat, those forbidden things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden upon us in the Quran, in the Sunnah, in the Quran, in the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So here is where in this ayah, your right, Allah's right over you is to worship Him. But then the right of your fellow human beings upon you is to be kind to them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Okay, so Allah went on and on. He can't guess it because these are my relatives. Al Masakin, the indigents out there, whether the Muslim or not, they have right over you. At least cultivate good relationship. If you can do good to them, do not harm them. Even that is also a good deed. By abstaining from bad deed, it's also a good deed. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to strengthen our iman. Amen. So, brothers, good conduct is the foundation for the fulfillment of one's obligation to Allah and to other human beings. Good conduct increases one's rank in the sight of Allah and erases one's misdeeds. Aisha radiallahu anha wa abdaha, may Allah be pleased with her related, that she heard the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, A believer achieves by his good conduct the same reward as a person who, who fasts much and prays the voluntary prayer the wife in, during the night. Dawahabudawud. Can you imagine good conduct? If you behave well, you achieve as much as the person who fasts much and the person who prays at night. Nawafin. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. This is why it's good to be a, a, a Muslim, a good Muslim. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said, he said, nothing is heavier on the skill of a believing slave of Allah on the day of resurrection than good conduct. Indeed, Allah dislikes the rude and the disrespectful. Because if we quote all of the hadiths in Arabic and then, and then put it in the meaning, we, we take longer time here. So I don't want to take most of your time. Brothers and sisters in Allah, Good conduct includes all commendable characteristics and all other matters which are good according to Islamic law and some reason. Some scholars have stated that good conduct is to spread all that which is good and abstain from all that which is evil. Good conduct entails that one performs all that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has enjoined and abstains from all that which he has forbidden. One must endeavor, brothers and sisters, to be pious, sincere, patient, forbearing, Modest, deliberate, decent, dutiful to one's parents, kind to kith and kin, passionate, courageous, generous, truthful, gentle, enjoy good and possess good neighborliness, humbleness, and tolerance. One must also abstain from trickery, betrayal, immodesty, disgraceful behavior, consuming unlawful food, drink, lying, slandering. Miserliness, cowardliness, showing off, and self-glorification. This is what Islam calls for, brothers. 
Yes, this alone, it addresses all of our concerns. It addresses all of our concerns. This is exactly what Islam calls you to. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to strengthen our iman. Amen. Good conduct benefits a believer in this life and in the next. And it increases his rank before Allah. Both good and evil people benefit from their good conduct. But as for the disbeliever, his good conduct will only benefit him in this world. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward him for it only in this life. Why on the last day he will receive nothing? Aisha radiallahu anha wa abdaha narrated as she once said, it's the old message of Allah. I want you to listen to this. Old message of Allah. What do you think about Abdullah ibn Jaddan? For he took care of his guests. He looked after the destitute and assisted people through their difficulties. Will all this be of any use to him in the hereafter? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in, in, uh, in answering this question to say that Aisha radiallahu anha, he said no. Why? For he never once said, my Lord forgive me my sins on the day of reckoning. He was a disbeliever. He never asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So brothers and sisters, what is the message in this? Because some of, all, some of our people can say, when a Christian man, he is good and they are doing this, they are doing that. Or this man never go to church, he never prays. So why his position? Well, even when you do good, if the intention is not for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it goes in vain. It goes in vain. And he never asked Allah for forgiveness. But here is the good news for you though. That, that means that we can do all of this and when we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness, Allah forgives us. It, it raises our rank in the sight of Allah. When we behave well, when we realize that we have made some mistakes and then come quickly to Allah. Oh Allah, forgive me. I have made some mistakes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who oh, tawab rahim He's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala receive your repentance. But it has to be tawbatan nasuha. When you repent from something, you can't go and do the same thing. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the understanding of our deen. Imam Nashafi'i, rahmatullahi alayhi. He said to us, He said, He said, When they talk about a nation, is dependent upon their conduct. When they lose their moral values, their, their, their instruction come upon them. They will lose their country, their community, their children. Subhanallah. We talk about nation success is dependent upon their behavior, their good conduct. This is why you should cultivate good conduct. When we lose our moral values, Zahabu, we are done. Wallahi, we are done. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from that, inshallah. Ikhwat al iman, my respected and honored brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enjoins in his book, the Quran, noble characteristics, and forbid all unpleasant ones. The prophetic sunnah also enjoys good conduct and forbids filthy behavior. In the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا تقربوا الفواحش ما ظهر منها وما بتن Allah Akbar, the Imam was talking about this ayahs today. The Imam was talking about this ayahs today, but just briefly, because he didn't have the time to, to actually elaborate on this ayah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's calling upon you believers. At the time he was speaking to idol worshippers, these believing folks, he said, call upon them, these are the, the law established by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all of us. We the believing men and women. It says, You come, let me explain to you what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden upon you. Number one, Allah to shirku billah. Shay'an, do not associate partner with Allah. Most of us will believe if you don't have some kind of image in the corner and so you don't worship idol. Subhanallah, but shirku ibadah. Shirk al ibadah. And this is our problem, all of us. If, most of us, if not all of us. There's something called shirk al ibadah. And we need to know what that is. You can be worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the same time 
associate the partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many of us will go to the masjid, the Imam is leading prayer, and sometimes we don't even know how many rakat we have made. 